Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is another Windows Server 2008 R2 video. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you, well, first I'm going to draw it out for you and kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about here. But then I'm going to show you how to set up a new zone in your DNS server. Now this came out recently with a phone conversation I had with a friend of mine. And we were talking back and forth about this idea of how to resolve a domain name inside of your own network and how you would have to also set that up to resolve that same domain name outside of your outside of your own network so it's a twofold process and i'm going to go ahead and show it to you now so let's go ahead and get started here on this whiteboard i have set up and i can show you uh the layout that we're talking about okay now what we're simply talking about here is, as I stated, setting up a DNS zone in your DNS server on your actual Windows 2008 R2 server and also being able to set this up outside. And I'll show you what that means and I'll show you why we do this and why it's important to know how to do this. Because a lot of us host uh, websites on our own servers that we're serving up to our workers or to our staff. Um, I actually do it with our school, so we serve it up in our school. But you also want to be able to serve those same sites or applications up outside of your office building or your school or whatever it be the case and allow people to come back into your server and access that same site. And you want it to be the exact same way because we don't want to tell people, well, you do it this way in the office and then you do it this way at home. That just doesn't make any sense. So we want to make it very, very simplistic. So let's start by doing a demonstration here. Once I find my where my cursor is here, here it is. So first we're going to draw what we always draw here for the internet is a cloud. All right, this is our internet. Or better yet, let's just name it as it's named today, the cloud. Because everybody refers to the internet as the virtual cloud. Now in here, right here, I'm going to draw my server rack and please don't email me for my drawing abilities because this is not a art contest this is just simply a demonstration to show you how this all works so this would be my server rack right here just like so okay now with that said we're going to be hosting a website in here so let's just say for now we're going to be hosting, and this also works uh, or could work for your mail server. But we're going to say now that we're just hosting a basic uh, website. So this is our, our basic web server right here. This is our web server. These are our client computers out here on our network. So we're inside of our, our buildings, uh, either your office complex or a school. Uh, or even in your house. I mean, this could even be in your house. I've had a lot of people email me lately saying, uh, Jack, I've been setting up a network in my house. What can I do and how do I do this and that? So this is also in your house. Next, we're going to be taking these through our standard switch. And we're going to be connecting all these nodes, as they're called, right? Every computer is connected to our network is called a node. And then this is this is going back into our actual uh, server rack here by way of a switch or wire or however you get it there now let's say for instance this web server has a internal address an internal IP and that internal IP is something like 192.168.1.40 let's say 40 really it could be anything that you want it to be that's just the number I'm using so this is known at this point this type of setup where you have you're hosting something in your network and it's hosted out to your individual clients this is known as a intranet a lot of people get confused with that in a lot of ways but it is in fact a intranet you have something you're serving up in your own network in its internal intranet. That's how we get that. Now, which is kind of confusing because if you talk about internet, doesn't that sound like it's the same thing? 
but that's a whole nother ball of wax. That's when instead of referring to the internet, we just refer to it as the cloud. So here's the next step. Our next step is we have to have in our, our network a DNS server because we want to host this up and we want to host it up as, um, let's just say for now, domain, name, whatever it is, dot uh, com or net or whatever you have. Okay, that is our domain name, domain name dot com. So if you type in domain name dot com, it's going to look at our DNS server and it's going to resolve it in our intranet to this internal address right here. Now I know a lot of you guys out there, a lot of you veterans are saying, Jack, now this is ridiculous because you can just use a server name. You can, but we want to make it as transparent as possible to your user. You want the user to be able to say, hey, at work, I go to domainname.com. It goes right to the website. At home, I go to domainname.com. It goes right to the website. I've done it, folks. I've done this numerous times, thousands of times, in fact. And I've used IP addresses. I've used a computer name. Uh, and they go right to, you know, the server name or whatever. It's a mess. It really is a mess. Make it as clean as possible. And this is the way to do it. So this is our internal DNS server right here. And this is called a zone. That is what this is will be referred to in our DNS server. It's going to be a zone because you also have a zone in there already set up for your internal network. So and we're going to look at that here in just a minute on our Windows Server 2008 R2. Now that that's set up, now you understand the intranet part of it. But now we have to get the cloud people. We have to get the people outside on our network in. We want to bring them into our network. How do we do this? We accomplish this. I hope you accomplish this anyway. With what's known as a firewall, right? So we have a firewall in our rack. I, I like Cisco gear, but you can use any firewall you want. It really, that doesn't, that's not part of this equation. What we need to do at the firewall level is we are bringing the cloud into our firewall and we are setting up what's known as a static. We're setting up a static address and this static to the internal has to be a routable address route routable address and that address could be whatever i don't even know of addresses let's just say um whatever your address bank is 92.162.5.4 whatever it is and you will set up a static route from there into your 192 address 68 1.40 what that's going to allow to happen is anybody outside is going to come through and they're going to come into that address and go right to that web server. And when you do this, make sure you limit this to port 80. And I know this is not a firewall class, but make sure you do an EQ, however you do that, and only allow or only open up port 80. This is called punching a hole through your firewall. That's what the folks call it. It's known as just punching a hole or making a pathway through your firewall to get to your server and you only want them to access port 80. Once that's done, now comes the fun of the meat and potatoes. Outside here on the cloud, you have to have a DNS server outside. You're not going to host this. And you can, there's ways, and let me tell you, let's back up a minute. There is ways that you can punch holes through your firewall and allow people to come into your network and resolve DNS names and numbers to your own servers. I don't recommend this. To me, it's a security issue. You only want to open a hole for what you need the hole open for. We don't want to let a whole lot of traffic in our network. So there's plenty of DNS servers out there. Now, folks, I use one called, and I've been using it for a long time. It's called Zone edit.com zoneedit.com and it is absolutely fantastic like I said I've used it for a lot of years and it works really really well and now we're not going to look at zone edit but I'm going to tell you how it works 
when you have your domain name, wherever you host it with, one and one, uh, GoDaddy, uh, whatever company you host it with, it's going to ask you in there for a DNS number. So let's say Zone Edit is, I don't know what Zone Edit is actually, 208.29.4.5. And then they'll have like .4.6. So you would put those numbers in your DNS, in your domain name record to say, if anybody looks for my domain name.com, please go to this address and resolve my records. That's what that's telling the uh, domain name hosting service. That's exactly what that means. So hopefully you're catching, you're sticking on with this. It's very simple. Don't get too confused with all this drawing. But I felt this is the best way I can explain it to you is by drawing it out and giving you a little map of how this looks. So what's going to happen now on Zone Edit, we're going to go over here and we're going to do that same kind of A record on Zone Edit. We're going to do domain name dot com. It's A record. It's pointing to an IP address now of or outside address that 92.162.5.4 the reason that is excuse me when anybody looks for this they're gonna go to here it's gonna go through the cloud hit zone edit zone it's gonna say hey go to that address it's gonna shoot down to our firewall be static through the firewall from this address to this address so I'm going to go right down to our web server here, and it's going to serve up that web page. Still using the domain name, domainname.com, whatever your domain name is. Just replace yours with that one, obviously. So that is how you do it. That way, on the inside of our network, we're using domainname.com. On the outside of our network, we're also using domainname.com. It's very, very transparent to your user. They don't need to know anything. It takes you literally, I can set these up now in our network, all of it from zone edit all the way down to my internal addressing, all the way down to programming my firewall. I have it down to about 10 minutes total. Everything's published. And sometimes it could take up to 24 hours for it to work from zone edit because it has to populate across the internet. But generally it would be about an hour. Uh, usually after lunch, I come back and everything's up and running just fine. So that is how that's done. And that's why it's done, folks. It's very, very simple. So now let's go ahead and get this out of the way. And we're going to take a look at that. So this is my, obviously, my Windows 2008 R2 server. We're going to go to Administrative Tools and open up our DNS server. And right here, this is our forward lookup zones. And you can see under here, we have home.net. And if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know that that is my basically internal uh, little test network that I build here for these classes. Now, anything you add to your network and you join to this domain server is going to be in here. You can see where it says um, home laptop. It says server one, Windows uh, 7 on here. And it gives it an A record and it points to it. The reason that is, folks, when you're on your network, and I'm sure you know DNS, so I'm not going to tell you a whole lot about that, but when you're on your network, instead of remembering all everybody's IP addresses, if you just know the computer name, you can remote into it just with the computer name. That's why this is all here. What we want to do here is on the forward lookup zone, we're going to right click on it and click on new zone. It's either a primary zone, a secondary zone, a sub zone, or a stub zone, and uh, store the zone in Active Directory. I usually shut this off, but it's a primary zone, and we'll give it a zone name. And we called this domain name.com. What we called it. And we'll just let that go there. And we'll do that and finish. Now, what you see is you have domain name.com right here. So to get to that web server, what we're going to do here is you're basically going to have to have an A record first. So we're going to do a new host or A record. And we're going to give it an address because this is a subdomain up here. We're going to leave that blank. 
and we're gonna give it an IP address. And I said this happens to be 192.168.1.40. Add the host. Now, it's telling me right here, whenever anybody goes to that domain name.com, same as the parent folder, that's the parent folder, it's going to go into 192.168.1.40. That's for our internal or, or intranet. That's how that works. On the other side, on zone edit, remember to set that up the same way. You're going to set your domain name in there and give it an A record, but you're going to set that to your outside address, your routable address. The one other thing I usually go in here and do just to make sure all bases are covered is I'll put www in here. And I'll give it the same address. People often say, Jack, why do you do that extra work? Because, you know, I never know how anybody's going to type it in to their web browser. This way, if they type www.domainname.com, you know, like most people like to add the www, they'll still go to the same address and that web page will be served up. <clears throat> so, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I hope you're learning here about Windows Server 2008. Uh, this is R2. There's so many different parts of running a network and so many different parts of um, or pieces to, you know, setting up your DHCP properly, DNS, and getting all these to work uh, like an integrated system like they should. And as I said, making it very, very transparent to your users. Um, the users out there, you know, most of these folks use Windows. And they use it at home. Uh, they have a home computer. They turn it on with no password and they work. Uh, we can't make it that simple in the network, unfortunately, because we need passwords for security. But we can make a lot of this stuff as transparent as possible to not make them have to uh, dig into things and get too deep and, and get too much, I call it, uh, techno overload. So you don't want that to happen. And folks, if you enjoyed this, please go to my website, jackstechcorner.com. Click on the very back link. It'll say online classes. I teach Windows Server 2008 R2 online. It's an online class. It's at your own pace. So take your time. You can go through there. And I leave you on there forever. So you'll never be taken off. You can always go back and rewatch. It's based on videos. So it's very easy, just like the one you just watched. It's a video. Then there's a little quiz. Don't get too hung up on those quizzes. There's usually two or three questions. Just so I can ensure that you're doing okay, that you're catching on to the material and that everything is working out for you okay. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at any time, and I talk to all the folks on there and uh, answer questions for you to help you out with even your network to get you more prepared and get you ready to go. At the end, when you finish up, you get a certificate, and I mail that out to you, and uh, that certificate's good to put in a, um, you know, with your resume. Most people put them in their portfolios, and they have it in there that you've actually completed a course on uh, understanding Windows Server 2008. So... There you go. So I hope to see you there. And if not, there's also a DVD available with just the uh, videos with, with no certificate or no training. But there is a, also a DVD available on the homepage at jackstechcorner.com. So again, hey, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this Windows Server 2008 class. And uh, I'm sure I'll come up with more for you here in the future. This is just something that I had a phone call the other day and we were talking about. And I thought I would share it with you and uh, pass the information along. So again, thank you so much. If you're not subscribed to my videos here, please subscribe and check out the website again, jackstechcorner.com. Until next time, keep going on those uh, Windows servers. Keep working. Always check your security. And I'll see you back here next time on Jack's Tech Corner for another Windows Server 2008 R2 video training. Bye for now.